This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. We find ourselves in an empty parking lot. An empty parking lot with only a couple cars, tons of spaces, and there's nothing to be seen throughout. But this is the natural habitat of the minivan, because not only will you find a minivan in an empty parking lot, but you'll find them parking next to each other. Why? We don't know, but we will find out on Test Drive. This is the second minivan comparison that we're doing, a Test Drive Showdown, comparing two minivans. And interestingly enough, the first one we did was on a Chrysler Pacifica versus the Kia Sedona at the time. But the Sedona got a big glow up here because this is a much different vehicle. Victor, why don't you tell us a little bit about our Carnival? Absolutely. This is a 2024 Kia Carnival SX trim, which is the top of the line. It's in this gray color that's really popular nowadays. Under the hood, it has a 3.5 liter V6 that puts out 290 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. This is a front-wheel drive only vehicle. You cannot get all-wheel drive with this, nor can you get any hybrid variants of this as of yet. Correct. But what about the Pacifica? Yeah, so the Pacifica comes with a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Now, it's not the same one that we see in most applications. This is running on an Atkinson cycle because this specific one is the hybrid plug-in, which uh, is good for fuel economy, giving you yeah. good range and about 50 kilometers of pure electric drive. And we do understand that that doesn't make these two apples to apple comparisons, but if you were to strip that feature off and go with a standard ICE only version of this, then they would obviously be comparable. But Big price difference there. Victor, how much is yours? This is all in $52,000 Canadian, including delivery charges. This, if you didn't go with the ice, or if you went with the ice only and not the plug-in hybrid, it would be about 65,000 Canadian with delivery and all that. It's quite a big difference there. Oh and that's my. what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna figure out what makes these two different. But as you mentioned though, with this having a hybrid option that gives a little bit more choice. And there's also an all wheel drive option available, not at the same time, you have to pick and choose. So really three different configurations with the Pacifica. But let's talk about the looks because they are both handsome looking vehicles, right? Your, yeah. uh, your daytime running lights are still on. I think mine have turned off now, but yours are beautiful. Just, I love it. Yeah, we've got the sort of Kachow thing the from Kachow. Lightning McQueen going on here with the lightning I do a little like bit. It. It's it's a looker. I oh, would yeah. say this, in my opinion, is one of the best looking minivans out there. The design language that Kia took on this is they wanted to infuse a little bit of an SUV kind of design language in there. So the body is a little bit lifted. The, mm -hmm. the shape is a little bit more boxy. Whereas the Pacifica, it's a completely different route. This is just more roundish, yes. probably better for um, air coefficient, aerodynamics coefficient. I I think I'm leaning towards the Kia for Design looks. wise. You know what, I really like the facelift on the Pacific. I think that was a much needed improvement a couple years ago when they brought out the 21 model years. They changed the front end and just makes it look a little bit more premium than it did before. So I like the look of it. Rear end, you've got a full length tail bar, uh, LED light strip, I think same on the the Kia, so both uh, more or less similar exterior equipment. Right? We've got all the safety tech you could hope for, lane keep assist, blind spot yeah. monitoring, adaptive cruise control. Yeah. Both have sliding rear doors, which is great. Both have power lift gates. So a lot of the stuff that you really want out of a van comes with this and great reasons why you would consider this over an SUV. But we need to figure out what the interiors have to offer, the drive and all that. So let's hit the road first with the Pacifica, see if we could justify the nearly $70,000 for this. And we'll see what's going on with the Carnival. Sounds good. So now we're in the Chrysler Pacifica. The interior looks nice, you know, with a lot of leather and screens and we got nanny cams for the back. We've got nice headliner, but I'm surprised that at this price point, we don't have a sunroof. Yeah, and it's not even an option for this. The, the way that Chrysler's gone for 24 at least, um, it's different so you can't get a sunroof and we're missing a lot of features and we'll talk about how that compares to the Kia but for example back here I've got no heated seats 
so it's a little chilly. Uh, there's tri-zone climate control, controls are up on the ceiling. And I do have screens, which is nice. They're the same, same ones that we saw in the Grand Cherokee, so you've got Amazon Fire TV built in. But that's really the only amenities back here. I mean, the seats are comfortable enough. I have some, some options to, to kind of slide them up and back, but for the most part, I mean, it's, it's nothing over the top. Um, kind of exactly what you would expect from a, a Chrysler minivan, but still sort of the thinking of the 90s and early 2000s, not really of, of the future, which, you know, I think minivans are sort of evolving. When the Pacifica first came out, you know, about half a decade ago, it was all the craze, you know, it had all the newest technology and good designs and and upscale materials and stuff like that. But with the 2024 model year, it's starting to feel a little bit dated, don't you think? Yeah, there's some strong competition, which is why we're comparing it to the Carnival, but even things like the Toyota Sienna or Honda Odyssey offer some really compelling options as well. So again, like the key standout feature of this car, this one that we've got here, is the plug-in hybrid. Uh, it's a little too chilly today for it to be in full electric mode, just to, to keep the heating and everything going, but you know, the week that I had with it uh, was pretty good overall. I, you know, it was doing pretty well for fuel efficiency, so this would definitely be much more fuel efficient than the Carnival, but you're paying quite a bit more for it. I mean, this doesn't feel like a $70,000 vehicle to me. Uh, a lot of plastics back here. And again, just like, you know, you've got front heated seats and heated steering wheel, but there's no ventilated seats at this trip. You mentioned there's no sunroof. Uh, there's nothing back here, right? So you're limited on some of those features back there. And then, you know, minivan feature-wise, it's really just that nanny cam, the, the fam cam up at the top. You can keep an eye on your kids. Um, but one feature that the Kia has over this is you can talk to the passengers in the back. So if they can't quite hear you, you use the microphone on the, the front compartment, you push the, the steering wheel button, boom, you can talk to the people in the back. But here, not so much. Yeah, even though we have a lot of buttons in the center console and on the steering wheel, heated seats and heated steering wheel is only accessed through the screen. It's oh, something yeah. that I, I don't really understand. We have a lot of other buttons that are potentially less useful, like a screen off button, a, a mute button that, you know, you could probably just press the volume button to, to get yeah. rid of the sound. A couple other buttons that I don't feel that I would ever really use it that often, but heated steering wheel would be one. Um, we've got two dedicated buttons for adaptive cruise control distance, which could easily just be one, yep. you know, rotate the the buttons a little bit and make some smart decisions i think that is one of the things that this pacifica could improve on although there are a lot of great things about this car one of them being the powertrain you know a minivan is supposed to be able to do both city very good as well as long distance and i think this checks the box well, great, it, it does, because we, we took it here, obviously, to, to film. We're in Mississauga today. Typically, we're in St. Thomas, but yeah, I've been driving it both in-city and on the highway, and having the plug-in hybrid is is truly, you know, what sets this apart in terms of its offerings, because if you do a lot of in-town stuff, if you really use this as a minivan to get your kids to and from soccer practice or school and stuff like that, then you should be using the, the electric drive like 99% of the time. So you'll save a lot. And you know, at home, this costs me on the worst time for charging. I, I have my EV Duty smart home charger to tell me what the you know maximum on peak cost would be. It's like 45 cents to charge this thing up to full. So it's a no brainer to, to go with that if you've got the budget for it. Because uh, again, that's gonna be the, the main differentiator between these two vehicles will come down to price. And can you justify the, the extra $20,000 for this over the, uh, the Kia? And yeah, I mean, like back here, it's it's fine. You know, road, uh, road noise is pretty good. I haven't actually sat in the back while being driven, but it's super comfortable. And that's what I love about minivans is like the ride and drive is really good. So it's super comfortable back here. The bumps get eaten up, no problem. And I'm sure, Victor, you're experiencing the same thing up there. Yeah, that's right. This ride's great. Um, the suspension is soft. The dampening is adequate for a minivan. And it's also great in stop and go traffic as well. Okay, speaking a little bit of the driving dynamics of this vehicle, first of all, obviously this is a plug-in hybrid, but there's no drive modes. You can only do whatever 
the Pacifica wants and um, you can't really force the car into an electric only driving mode. Um, although it's quite easy because the programming of this this drivetrain is that you always the, the car always depletes the battery first and then the engine sort of kicks in when necessary but I'd like the option you know absolutely and I think that's again a little bit of a miss this was Chrysler's first plug-in hybrid so they're still kind of using that older technology it, it could use with a bit of a refresh but yeah again if if you're buying it to do stuff in town uh, yeah, it's 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 almost simpler. Like if it, if you're buying a plug-in hybrid, not because you really wanted a plug-in hybrid, but you like the idea of saving money and not really thinking about it, then it's great because you never have to worry about what mode you're in. You just you just drive it. You just plug it in though. Make sure you keep it charged up. But only about two hours to charge it uh, on a level two at home. So that's uh, it's really good. Especially like I said, if you do a lot of in-town stuff, you pretty much never have to use gas. Yeah, that's right. And the power from just the electric motors are very much adequate. When necessary, the engine will kick in to boost the boost the power output even more. But, you know, driving around town right now, pretty much just in electric, you, you do notice sometimes if you're paying attention when the engine comes on. Um, but for the most part, if you're just driving just for just using this as a tool of transportation, I think it's pretty seamless for what it is yeah you can't ask for too much more you know aside from price but uh yeah i think that's more or less the interior on this i think it's time we head over to the kia figure out uh, if you can save some money going with something else or if this really is still the king of the minivan well, we are in the back now of the Kia Carnival, and we're starting on my portion because there's so much more going on back here. As you can see, I am in the VIP lounge, which is quite a lovely experience back here. Now, I'm pretty much, I mean, I'm maxed out. I'm, I'm actually almost inside the sunroof area here, but sunroofs, which don't get on the Pacifica. And uh, I can lounge myself back. I just don't want to look too unflattering, but we'll throw in some B-roll to show you. But both of these center captain's chairs here can slide all the way back like this or slide all the way forward and have a proper three row. But, you know, if you're being driven around like you have lots of money and you want to be living the life of luxury, this is the place to be doing it because it is very comfortable back here. Plus, you've got power options. So you've got some power controls for the second row here. You've got the leg extender. You've got, like, oh. See, I could just go all the way back. I could actually just have a little sleep here. Oh, it's actually really comfortable when you're, when you're lying back. You wouldn't think it would be, but it's almost like going to the dentist, but just not painful. So sunshades, you got three row climate control and big feature, you've got heated and ventilated seats back here, which you do not get on the Pacifica, which, you know, wait, you don't like your kids? That's the, the whole point of having a minivan is to put your kids back there. And what, if you don't like them, then, oh well, I guess they don't need heated seats. But Victor, how do you find the front cabin area of the Kia Carnival? So the front cabin, it's quite obvious that this vehicle is a little bit more modern, styled. Um, we've got two big displays in the, in the front, one digi two digital screens, um, both would be over 12 inches so that's great addition to making this car a little bit more modern we've got some capacitive touch buttons which is not my favorite however they're very big and clearly logoed so no problem there and i get physical button for my heated steering wheel and heated seats and ventilated seats so no complaints there <laughs> there you go you know buttons right we love buttons it's nice to have and your screens are bigger too because they're both 12.3 inch versus the uh, it's a 10 inch screen on the Chrysler and then the driver information screen is much smaller on that. So a little bit more modern tech there for you as well. Again, same with the Pacifica. This has all the safety features that you'd like, you know, lane keep assist, uh, adaptive cruise control. This one, Kia calls it highway drive assist. All this suite of safety features, that's exactly what you want. Um, and it's very, very important in a vehicle like this because you're driving your kids around, you're driving your, your parents around, you know, maybe some elderly people in the car and, and, and youngsters as well. So it's exactly what you need. You've got blind spot monitoring, all that kind of stuff that just ties into a great package of this minivan. 
Yeah, so the, the one thing I have noticed, though, back here is the ride is a little bit better on the Pacifica. And I'm just, you know, not sure if that's 40 years of, of Chrysler making minivans and they know how to do it. But, you know, the, the seats are comfortable back here, but I do find I feel the bumps just a little bit more in this. Interior road noise and stuff, pretty much comparable between the two, despite having sunroofs. You'd think that that might uh, change it a little bit, but uh, sound deadening back here is pretty good. And you were talking about the safety tech. The other tech that we get back here, similar to the Pacifica, we do have a camera, so if you wanted to, to keep an eye on your kids or uh, maybe you're a rideshare driver and you, you want to just keep an eye on who's back there you've got some options for you, yourselves there but you know, the, the only downside to being this far back i was saying to victor as we started filming is my airplane ceiling mounted vents here are now too far away from me and i cannot reach my heated seat or or, or controls anything on the side there i'm too far back so that'd be the only downside to, to that i don't think there's an option to be able to control it from the the front you can do that on like a 7 series bmw or a mercedes s class but obviously this is not even close to that in terms of price but in terms of comfort though i gotta give it to credit it is it is a really comfortable car it's been a couple years since we drove it and i do like sitting back here it's uh, it is nice yeah so the drive is a little bit better in terms of handling and stuff like that on the pacifica this this minivan is a little bit lifted to give you that suv kind of um, styling from the exterior so you get a little bit more body roll when turning and, uh, and bumps are handled less comfortably compared to the Pacifica but overall this is still a great vehicle and it gets the job done I think I would take the these first class captain seats oh, yeah. um, over the driving dynamics of this vehicle I would say it depends on what you're buying it for too, right? Like I said, like this would be a killer vehicle if you're doing ride share or anything like that, because you roll up in something like this, you have the flexibility to switch the seats around much like you do on the Pacifica, because obviously your third row is not here, so you can get rid of it, fold it flat with the seats, but you have the option as well as having a, you know, a different configuration, which you don't get on the Chrysler. Yes, yeah, so the major thing when I'm sitting back here, or whether I was driving a couple years ago when I drove this first, but this absolutely feels like a $52,000 vehicle with delivery. Like this is what I would expect from a really well optioned minivan because you've got everything you really need and you've got the stuff that you want as well. Like I said, ventilated seats for front and second row is a great uh, thing to need or want rather, whereas uh, heated seats and steering wheel, that's more of a need, but you've got everything that you really want and need out of this vehicle at a really affordable price point. It's no wonder they've been selling so well for Kia because it is hitting that sweet spot of what people want. And I think that's the ultimate problem with the Pacifica is it is you know obviously when you compare it to a similarly equipped three-row SUV it kind of works out number wise but you know the whole point of buying a minivan before was to have something affordable that your average family could afford and put all their kids in and Kia has nailed it when it comes to that so strictly from like a minivan functionality affordability perspective this definitely takes it uh, if you're looking for a little bit more refinement and you're looking for those options like i said if you need all-wheel drive or you want a plug-in hybrid you can't have both at the same time but if you want either of those you have to go with the pacifica uh, it just means you're you're paying a little bit more like entry level uh, entry level all-wheel drive for the Pacific guys, I believe like just under 60, so like 57,000, 59,000. And then uh, plug-in hybrids, you know, kind of around that territory, but you're not getting a lot of features, nothing even close to what you've got here. Yeah, speaking of refinement, you can clearly notice a little bit more road noise and a little bit more engine noise from, from the V6 that we have in front of us. And that's not necessarily a thing that you would want in, in a car like this. I can understand if you, you know, you're driving a, a sports car that you want a little bit more engine noise in there. But in a minivan, you want it to be as quiet as possible. And this is something that I think is lacking a little bit on the Carnival compared to the Pacifica. Yeah. And, and yeah, I'm sure Kia will, will continue to work to, to refine this vehicle because again it has been selling well there's been really been no change for 2024 it's more or less the same vehicle moving on um, but they've been doing a great job with it and like i said sales have been pretty good for it so realistically you know this is a comparison between the two you know 
hands down the the carnival has better bang for your buck uh just get better configurability with the pacifica but regardless of which one you go for we hope that this has allowed you to consider a minivan over buying something like a cross or a crossover suv just because you get a lot more flexibility these vehicles are a lot more versatile than a suv is just with the third rows again like you've got a lot of stuff that you can do with a minivan that you can't just do with an SUV and you know, we talked about that a little bit more in length on the full episode we did on the Chrysler Pacifica so you can check that video out if you want to see a little bit more about why we think the minivan is still the king of the road. So aside from the Carnival and the Pacifica we nowadays don't really have that many options. The Dodge Caravan, the Dodge Caravan is no longer. We have the Toyota Sienna and that's a hybrid only so in terms of supply, it's a little bit get it's a little bit harder to get your hands on, and then we have the Odyssey, and I, and that's about it. That's that's everything on the market. If you want something that has, oh, 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 oh that was a big one. Yeah. Wow, we hit that in the in the Chrysler. That wasn't that bad. So yeah. So there's some of the refinement you can tell, right there. <laughs> the suspension has a little bit more room for improvement in terms of bit. the bumps and stuff. But back to what I was saying. If you want a minivan that has all-wheel drive, you're really down to two options, the Pacifica and the Sienna. The Odyssey doesn't offer all-wheel drive, nor does the Carnival. So that, that maybe that helps you with your, with your choices of minivan. The Kia Carnival is definitely a very strong competitor in this segment. So are the other ones. The Pacifica is a little bit more expensive but you get several things that you don't get, like a plug-in hybrid version that you couldn't even spec on, on the Carnival. So tell us down below in the comments what you would pick as your favorite minivan. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and our channel. We also have a membership too that you can help support this channel on a monthly basis. All the information is in the link below in the description. But until next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Take care.